one and we're live hello everyone happy friday welcome to a new event hosted by the blockchain game alliance today will be a panel uh, on the topic of creating a game industry on the blockchain we'll be having uh, several uh, exciting speakers today who are introducing us to a new uh, blockchain environment to develop games and nfts we'll uh, learn more through uh, this conversation before I do that, i love to uh, present you the Blockchain Game Alliance for those of you who are not yet familiar. We are an organization that's committed to promoting blockchain within the video game industry. We are counting over 230 members and uh, really growing. This is nice as we are like all working together to encourage adoption of um, non-fungible tokens, decentralization, DAOs, DeFi, and showcase all the way, potential ways that they can really help develop new ways to create, publish, play games, and also build strong communities around them. We are, of course, advocate for more diversity and inclusivity of women in the industry, been pushing several panels on the topic, and we are here to also provide um, a space where the members could network with each other, could work together on a workshop and research, could uh, generate business and uh, working collaboration opportunities, representing various blockchain games companies, uh, allowing them to reach to more users or players, and obviously advocating for blockchain within the broader game industry. I'd like to uh, give a big thanks, a big short shout out to our sponsors, including AMD, Antler Interactive, Ubisoft, Zaya, Illuvium, Fear, OneWayBlock, Mobox, Star Atlas, Gameloft, Vulcan Forge, Ardo.io, Non-Fungible, Digital Entertainment Asset Group, Gamerash, Tap.io, IOI, Triumphex, Drops, Algorand, NRKX, Boston Protocol, Chromia, Polygon, Nextype, Yushi, Animoca Brands, Contribute, Galaxy Interactive, Consensus, Tezos, Polkadot, and Dap Radar, and um, Akanun as well. As you can see, uh, they are here supporting uh, even more the activities of the BGA, and today will be uh, I think talking a lot about Tezos, so really excited to hear more. You can see also some of our members. We are they are representing all all corners of the industry, including games and gaming, obviously, change and protocol, developer solution, esports, press, media, investors, marketplace, and many more um, companies in the space. We are running various activities and events, almost one event a week at the BGA, sometimes two now, <laughs> including interviews, workshops on various thematic, new member presentation at the, at the end of each month, various panels on uh, different topics, demo days, that's also one of our most successful events where you can get to see the product as they are live. Without any further ado, we're really excited today to present creating a gaming industry on the blockchain this will be a panel hosted by Jacob Ponzi and featuring Alexia Martinel, Florian Poto, and Stefan Pagnassiri. Welcome, everyone, and um, I leave you to the stage. If you want to follow the Blockchain Game Alliance, you can check us on Twitter, Medium, and Discord as well. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks for the introduction, uh, Sebastian. Um, we're, uh, I'm Jacob, I'm the host uh, today for the, the panel. Uh, I'm part of TZ APAC, which is a uh, Asia, well, Singapore-based uh, blockchain consulting firm uh, where we help, you know, startups, but entities, any entity, it can be startups to medium size to, to uh, large-scale enterprises. Uh, help, we help them to integrate uh, blockchain technology and specifically uh, the Tezos protocol. So we work with governments and uh, corporates alike to to help build uh, and integrate with Tezos. And I'm actually joined by some, some of our ecosystem members today. Um, and I'll just go ahead and sort of, to save the introductions of everyone, uh, I'll read your bios if that's okay with you guys. Sure, thank you, Jacob. Perfect, so first we have uh, Alexia from Nomadic Labs. Alexia is the strategy and adoption manager for the Bel Bel Belgium Luxembourg region uh, within Nomadic Lab team. Uh, she has a strategy, a strategy and product management b background with experience in blockchain and privacy-oriented technologies, uh, product management, and in VC business and ana analysis and strategy. 
which is quite interesting. Next, from the Nomadic Lab team, we have someone with a more technical flair, uh, which is Florian Pato. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Right. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's my French. Yeah. I haven't taken French in like three years, so it's a little rusty. Uh, he is formerly the blockchain lead for Air France uh, and an independent blockchain consultant for a Swiss digital exchange. Uh, now he's the senior support engineer for Nomadic Labs, and he has been involved with in all aspects of blockchain technology, uh, uh, blockchain projects from IT integration, monitoring, delivery, uh, development, security, you know, from end to end, essentially. Uh, and now his current mission is to help individuals and companies uh, working on Tezos. Uh, and then last but not least, we have Stefan Payasiri. He is CEO and co-founder of NFT One Global. He has over 20 years of experience across the globe. Uh, he's a serial entrepreneur that's invested in fintech, gaming, mobile, ad tech, venture capital, AI, blockchain, you name it. Uh, from conception until exit, he has built and led uh, teams such as Built, Built to Mobile, S, uh, SEA Gaming, which was later acquired by Wargaming. Uh, he's an avid, uh, he's, he's avid, an avid member of the gaming community. Uh, he's, you know, he's helped, he's been in blockchain for, for many years now and has helped various startups in the early days from corporate structure, financial modeling, business strategy, and fundraising. And he also sits on the advisory board of, of many companies. So he is well versed, uh, in startups and blockchain. So, uh, I think let's just, um, well, yeah, I, I think let's just get, get it started with the first person um, to open up the floor. So, Alexia, um, I just maybe please give us your 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 sort of take of the, the current state of uh, the, the, the NFT market and gaming on in, in blockchain and sort of cover what I didn't miss uh, if I, you know, if I miss something in your bio. Um, sure. Thank you, Jacob. Um, so are we talking about um, NFTs or NFT in gaming? Um, because I think like, um, you know, there's, there's many questions here. If we take uh, the, the question on just like, where are NFTs and what do, you, do we believe, um, you know, NFTs can help with? Um, I think uh, that NFTs uh, have grown extremely fast. Um, we're seeing more and more projects uh, projects uh, developed around um, the idea of an NFT ecosystem. Um, NFT is essentially uh, the way in which, I mean, at least I see it personally, um, are a representation of um, the art market, uh, meaning that, you know, why would an individual just buy an NFT? Well, the point of buying an NFT is that you somehow see it as an investment or something that's going to gain value. Uh, but today, uh, I think like we're still in a phase, uh, in a very early stage, uh, still exploratory. It's still very exciting, but I think um, that we still need some time to settle and understand the market a little better. When it comes to gaming, I think we have been able to identify use cases that are really clear and really pertinent for the industry. Um, but I think that the exploration continues. At least that's what we're seeing on Tezos. Thank you, Alexia, for that. Um, in, in sort of... You sort of led into a good point that I wanted to ask Stefan is, okay, you, we have NFTs, we have this sort of market, the hype is there, uh, but what what are some of the mechanisms that are needed to bridge um, into the gaming community and sort of what 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 sort of like uh, frameworks or structures do, do these NFTs need to be in, implemented in or whatever to sort of uh, to catch that first that first Netscape moment where it's like, it just goes viral uh, in the gaming community. Should I answer again? Oh yeah, so sorry, I was, uh, <laughs> my question was about um, it, the NFTs in gaming. So like what, where are you, where would you see like the Netscape moment? Like what sort of, what, what do you think is the sort of uh, trigger point where it becomes like this sort of mainstream, uh, like it went like what basically how do you see it getting from where it is now to sort of that next stage of early adopters instead of sort of being in like the innovators uh realm now um i think we need uh to facilitate the access to um nfts in gaming as in uh 
finding use cases that are pertinent so far. Uh, I mean, you know, there's there's lots of talks regarding um, the secondary markets, as in gaming, facilitating the exchange of skins, for example, or like special artifacts. Um, there's also that notion of uh, of having um, special editions of some items, or in some games, card games, for example, in which you're going to have like special editions, etc. Um, but I think that NFTs intrinsically are tied with the adoption of blockchain. Um, so as long as individuals uh, and you know well, like later adopters um, w won't necessarily understand the realm of NFTs, I think it will take some time for NFTs to be easily implemented in gaming or at least to see that momentum that we're all waiting for. Well, mm -hmm. I think um, I think it depends what we're talking about. If we're talking about like just like the technical side of it or if we're talking about like the use of NFTs because that, for me, it's just two different things. Um, and also, are we looking at the traditional gaming side, or we're looking at really games that are inherently from like NFT enable at like at the source at the core, mm -hmm. just like Axie Infinity. So uh, I think we we need to look at different angle and different uh, ways to uh, to the NFT. For me, the NFTs and for for NFT one, the way that we build the company is just like we want to make sure that we can see NFT as a tool and at the kit for for people for like like entrepreneurs within in game or not, but like mostly here in games to use NFT to create new pattern, new usage, but also to enhance the user experience. And it's all about the user. And right now, um, I think uh, we can use the NFT as like, um, as, as Alexa said, just like for the collectible and, and, and trading items. But I think there are many more ways to be to be to use it. And then if we can manage to um, actually um, make it fun and then use it as a uh, as part of a game experience, as far as the gameplay, then it, it would be a win. It, it shouldn't be like, think we shouldn't think that NFT would be an add-on, but would be part of the game. It's just like really part of the gaming experience. Um, whether you are uh, having, creating the sense of ownership, like, like you guys, uh, Sebastian, um, just like, hey, why well, I want to own this piece of land and I want to do something with it, or I just want to use the NFT to represent who I am, and then you're getting more into customization of of your character or of who you are, or you can even like earn money. It's just like you're creating something, just like Axie right. Infinity. So you have different triggers. You just need to you need to understand what is the trigger that you want to input into your game and implement it. And then the technology. And then it will be. It will come times to use the marketplace, to use uh, Tezos or Polygon or other chains to help you build around it. But let's work on the usage, and then we will we will make it work. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And even beyond NFT, I think what's interesting is seeing the synergies that could be created within a broader like blockchain environment. AKA, if you let's imagine that um, a player. Um, earns money in a gaming environment then can spend it in the broader like blockchain environment for a complete different uh, application uh, whether we're talking about I don't know like sell sovereign identity to buy a product a service anything like that uh, these are all really interesting and I think NFT is a good way to bridge that you know kind of gap mm -hmm. and yeah NFT makes it understandable for the mass I think and less scary just like before you were seeing uh, uh, blockchain as more like crypto. Is it a scam? Is it working? Is it for me? Do we need like a the end of the wallet? Like it seems difficult, but now the understanding on NFTs just as a product itself emerging from the blockchain uh, technology makes it more readable for for the main for the main audience. So we just need to use it to uh, to promote and, and push beyond like the NFT and and I think blockchain as a technology as a way to manage um data as a way to manage ownership will go a little bit further but like uh, let's take the chance of using nft to to promote uh to promote it in, within the gaming industry and just on to bounce on what you guys said um the, the real adoption and all that you i think you all until you write on like uh, the, the implications and what nft can bring and that it must be used just not only as a like a kind of service but there must be a, a core part of the, the applications and of the games and um the 
the games will be successful when we the players don't even know that they are actually using blockchain and NFT and um, as you said, Stefan, uh, like it needs to be, it needs to be fun. And if they don't even know that they are using NFT and leveraging blockchain uh, to actually do their daily usage of the game, then that's the point where we will reach uh, adoption. And uh, that's uh, what we need to, to target. We need to well make it entirely transparent for the user, and uh, they don't even need to to know that they are actually using blockchain in the, in the background. That, that's a good point, but you know. That's sort of the opposite of where we are now, because most games, you know, all users know they're using NFTs. That's like one of the main selling yeah. points for the games now. Exactly. And, and it's, sort well, of I mean, it's because you're attract, you're trying to attract like the early adopters and you need to create a base. I mean, like as, um, until you get like a minimum, like like a, a minimum volume, then nobody wants to play your game. So if you have enough early adopters to to show you the, to, to show you the way um then you're you can work on on the on the bigger mass so uh i think it's it's a strategy but right now it might be the time for us to talk to the main or to to the main public mm -hmm. yeah and i think that perhaps the strategy when it will come to talk to the main public will be different in the sense that this is something that we see um when we launch well like uh blockchain applications that uh, solve uh, an issue for a traditional market the approach is completely different you don't necessarily need to talk about blockchain because users are not going to understand blockchain so you just like focus on the solution but when it comes to gaming i feel like um well, you know, we're talking about gamers, about people who use technology every day. So NFTs is and blockchain is obviously something that they have heard of, that they potentially use as well, and that is kind of a, like a selling point. Uh, so I get the you know the marketing um, kind of need or the marketing pertinence there. It makes sense. Well, then don't forget, like gaming now is has a broader audience than it was before, and uh, if you look at gaming as an industry itself. Um, when I started, it was mostly for hardcore gamers or just like people really gamers and we all seen as geeks, but right now, like everyone is playing games, just my mom is playing games on her phone. So, uh, we're, I, I think we're well getting into a mass adoption, like clearly moving forward. Uh, obviously the terms like NFTs or blockchain would be diluted in, Hey, this is how we use my game or this is what I do. And then we turn into more like a. Do, do the people talk, talk about microtransactions? No, they don't. They just buy items within the game and they don't care if they, if they use whatever they're using. So I think we'll, it will be natural to go this, this, this route as well. Um, and uh, it's just a matter of time. It's a matter of us giving them the right way to understand it. It's just, just a feature, it's just like a usage. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And as you said, Alexia, the, the gamers are the, probably the, the, the part of the population which is the most, uh, I would say, used to technology in general and which is a bit more tech savvy than the rest of the population. So maybe gamers are the, like the, the best population to target if you want to have like adoption on uh, blockchain initiatives. So that's why, yeah, it's probably like one of the, it would be probably one of the most successful industry uh, when it comes to, to blockchain in general. I guess now everyone is waiting on like a, a a game, like a one game to come out to be sort of like the crypto kitties of blockchain and gaming, where they f somehow married the two together to be, you know, this uh, magnum opus of uh, of a thing. But uh, Florian, I wanted to ask you since you're more on the technical side of things um, and sort of swinging towards more of like a company perspective. Um, so, you know what. what these gaming companies, what are um, some of the reasons you see them uh, beginning to look at blockchain? So these established uh, gaming studios, these, these, these studios already, um, what, what, why do you see them getting in? Um, and then basically, what are some of the technical considerations that they, that they have going into uh, you know, trying to actually implement a, a, a blockchain? Um, I think like probably the big uh, gaming actors are starting to, to look at blockchain because well, uh, on one side, thanks to the NFT and to, well, like the safety of the transactions, it can basically create a, a new economy and it's something like um, uh, the people in Spanish already talked about. It's basically you can it could even create uh, jobs where people could just play their games all day long and basically earn money from it. Thanks to like uh, rewards that they can earn from playing the game, uh, like uh, mining NFTs, all these kind of things. So it basically creates uh, new revenue streams for, for games and 
um, yeah, it's just a, basically a gold mine that it's not yet uh, exploited for for from for gaming companies that just need to be uh, to be explored. And on the technical side, well, there are some key factors that need to be addressed uh, from from the beginning, and one uh, of which is the well, the security, that smart contract security, and to basically the, the keys of the of the user. Because well, in most most blockchains, uh, people have to uh, to manage their, their own keys. So. Um, that's something that, that needs to be considered right away. How can you abstract the, the complexity of blockchain um, and embed it right in uh, inside the game and still provide the, the sufficient level of security? Uh, another one is um, facilitate the interoperability. For example, it can be like um, uh, between several games from the same company or even uh, having kind of... Uh, well, uh, some money that you can use in one game and another one that you can exchange for money and use it for something else. And the last one would be to facilitate uh, maybe the, the fiat to crypto transactions to yeah to, to abstract as much as possible from the, the blockchain specificities and make it completely, well, transparent for, for the users to have a very seamless experience. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for that. That's uh, yeah, I mean, that, that all makes sense. The 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 key bits, like the the management of the keys, I, it's a it's a point that I've never really thought super hard about in terms of like connecting it to games. So, I, do you are most people using like uh, some sort of custodial type solution, or maybe like a multi sig where the the gaming company holds one key and then the uh, the, the 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 player holds like two of the keys or something where they can you know somehow uh, you know, it, yeah, yeah, like is it an M of M, M type of scheme or um, or is it just kind of like the user is solely responsible for managing their inventory and if they lose it, their inventory is lost? Well, I think it, I think it will really depends on the strategy that the gaming companies will want to implement because while every like solution has its, uh, yeah, has its own pros and cons, and if you manage the keys for your user, right, you are basically the single point of uh, failure. And if you are hacked, for example, well, you can have great losses and all the users will be impacted. Meanwhile, if you let the users manage their own keys, uh, you have the risk that they won't be necessarily as uh, rigorous on the, on the key management as they that they should, and they can well lose their funds, lose their game content, and if it's like a regular public-private key management, then in that case you have absolutely no option to to help them to to recover. So that's that's one tricky point, and it needs to be yeah um, addressed at the at the design phase to be able to, to cover all the um, all the, the risks involved in every uh, every alternative. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. So th there, I have uh, the, the, the audience member has a question which I thought was really good. So I want to just ask it now, so I don't forget it. Um, but it's about the large corporations uh, moving from sort of a freemium model um, to a play to earn. So due to Axie Infinity and other games like that becoming popular, do you see? most games moving from a freemium type model to a, a, play, a pay to earn. Um, so it's kind of, uh, it's, it's not, I think he meant play to earn uh, instead of pay to earn, but do, do you see that like sort of flipping? Yeah, well, well, I, I think it's, uh, again, it's, it, it requires a certain type of people to play this kind of game. And then uh, it's just like uh, asking, uh, is there like a like a casual gamers versus like a hardcore gamers or like a shooters versus like PvP or 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 just like is there, it's it's just a different type of game and uh, obviously it creates like a new kind of like usage and new kind of games but I don't think all games would would be geared to to be a, a pay a, a play to earn um, you also want to play to have fun and I, I believe that like most of the people want to play to have fun not to not to make money. But if it's an option and then you can do both, why not? It's just uh, it's just um, how much time can you allocate to it and uh, how much dedication can you can you give it to it? Um, it's just like if you play like small sessions and just want to play to uh, to kill time, yeah, it's, it's one thing. And um, and I don't think it would be like the dominant model. It would just be a model. So you don't see you, you don't see a future where universal basic income is implemented via like uh, some sort of 
mobile app where you play your dailies. Like your dailies basically generate enough credits for you to buy your car. Do, you, do, you, do I think uh, people will become uh, gaming workers? No, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, but I, I might be wrong, um, but I don't think so. No, no hope. Anyone else on the panel like the like the like the utopian vision or? On my side, I, I definitely agree with uh, Stefan. I think it's uh, there will be several models, and for example, uh, as you said, casual gamers won't necessarily want to have these kinds of um, these kind of solutions. And the risk is also to create frustration if you have like every game based on that, and um, people just don't want to, to spend enough time on that. You have the risk of just losing a part of your gaming population. So yeah. you just need, depending on the games, to to provide the well the good balance, I would say, between all the alternatives. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you need to have different behavior within a game itself. Um, if you look at free to play, um, you have paying, paying users and you have non-paying users and the paying users won't play only with paying users, it's not fun. I mean, you need a mass, you need a lot of people playing and then you need to track a, a, a lot of different type of people, good and bad players, but you need it. And, uh, and whatever the games you're gonna go after and the type of game you're gonna go after, you will also have like different, um, different type of people playing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Uh, so, Absolutely. Uh, if, I, if I can add, add it, um, something to it, I think it also depends on the on the target and on the background. You know, different countries will have different appeal to different games, and they will be playing uh, free versions, but also paid versions where you can play to earn, uh, because there is a way of engaging with that side of the gaming industry. Uh, especially like I'm, I'm seeing this happening in Italy where there's a lot of um, interested, a lot of interest in, in blockchain games and NFTs and it keeps increasing. And people are interested because economic crisis has been going on for way too long and it's a good way for learning new ways of doing your own economy but also while having fun. So I think it really depends on how you're seeing the gaming industry developing in which countries and from which background you're from, but also what age you are, uh, in which age you, you will feel like. So I think it varies a lot. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. And I think that in gaming, perhaps at some point we'll see a shift towards more educational gaming. And this is something that we see more and more with, uh, you know, like today's schools in which like students are increasingly connected um, and you need to engage them. Um, and I think that like gaming uh, would be a perfect application to um, foster and kind of ease that. Uh, and perhaps at some point uh, play to earn some sort of model uh, might make sense. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, there's a less of a feeling of being guilty for doing that, because I think there's an inerrant feel of not uh, give it a go uh, because of all the constraints that blockchain has been having or NFTs, you know, the mm. not clarity around the, the legalities of these things. But I think everything will be settling soon. And uh, once that will happen, I think games would be a perfect way of educating, but also engaging with younger audiences. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I think we are also uh, always like mostly uh, even us looking um, at the blockchain in the angle of like money and uh, and uh, turning into like a financial play. But um, if you look at games itself, you have different other triggers and uh, the sense of community, the sense of being part of like a group um can be used as well i mean like you can you can imagine creating nfts for a guild and then you're getting them hey this is my guild this is well like this is my group and then they specifically created this piece of items or this uh, this uh this nft to to be to show that we're part of a group so i think you're you yes this this like uh, aspect of hey i want to earn money or i can make money with with like through uh like reselling my items or, or mon uh, like monetizing whatever i do in the game but you also have the other triggers and uh, and then we will have to explore those as well. Yeah, very true. Um, so another thing that I've been wanting to ask, uh, ask you guys about, um, well, this is sort of directed at Alexia, but you know, anyone can sort of jump in. I would love to get you guys' opinion, but um, I know that you're sort of on the front lines of adoption and sort of, uh, 
what it, are the business considerations different for small, medium to large enterprises when trying to uh, develop a, a blockchain game, right? And sort of like, where, where would you want to be? Like, what kind of startup, what kind of company would you want to be? Do you see, would you rather be a, um, like, is it easier for a startup to sort of move in this space? Or is it better for uh, like a large, um, like a traditional gaming studio to, to, to actually, you know, get, get into this? Or is their legacy, their legacy process is sort of not, uh, not developed for the, for, for the blockchain or, you know, so can you explain, uh, explain that? <laughs> That's a great question. Thank you, Jacob. Um, to be perfectly honest right now at Tezos, uh, well, France, Belgium and Luxembourg so far, um, we haven't seen that many um, gaming companies, uh, you know, like working on a park or developing. Well, we, we had a case of Ubisoft becoming a corporate baker, aka creating uh, blocks on Tezos. Um, but from what I know and what I hear of the industry is that, um, I mean, I believe that, you know, being a startup uh, allows you to move faster and have greater flexibility in perhaps how you want to implement uh, a game or how you want to um, play in your ecosystem. Um, but on the other side, uh, being a big player uh, gives you a knowledge of the industry and, and some financial power that a startup cannot have. Um, you know, I think there's, there's trade-offs and reality with both uh, approaches. Um, I did not have a like real life case uh, personally. I don't know if other people in the panel um, do. Well, um, we are um, helping um, like companies to 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 push for adoptions, mostly in gaming, and uh, and we talk to big studios for for certain type of games, their existing games or. And upcoming games, and we also talk to startups. So I think I'm I'm both on both side, and uh, both have like each of them has their own approach and has their own allocation of resources. Um, when it comes to uh, to a startup, a lot of their most of their allocation would be developing and trying to find ways to uh, to uh, to integrate some of the features uh, offered by NFTs or, or or blockchain in general. As opposed to like the big guys, they're like more cautious, and they might not be want to be the one to to uh, to be the first movers. But they are interested. So if we if us from the from the from the industry to give them the tools and uh, to give them the way to to use it, we're actually talking to some of the big big guys, and uh, hopefully we can announce things soon. But yes, it, it's coming. Nice. Yeah, I, I was thinking about that question too, and trying to figure out, you know, wh where would I rather be uh, a, a startup or or a big corporate? Um, and in a similar line of questioning, it's is to you, uh, Stefan. Where you know, but not what size would you want to be, but where would you want to be uh, as a startup? You know, looking to raise capital to to deploy to basically build your, your blockchain game. You know, would you rather are, is it the APAC region? You know, which I. I'm slightly biased towards, or are you looking for, <laughs> you know, EU or, uh, or or the Americas? Um, I think uh, there is capital everywhere right now, <laughs> um, and uh, and literally there is capital everywhere uh, right now. Um, yeah, again, it, it depends on like what what kind of game uh, we you want to launch and what is your core audience. Um, for us, we're Geo-agnostic. We we have uh, we have presence. We we've been uh, we started a company in Singapore, but we have uh, we have a reach in in the West, so in US, and that's why I'm in the US right now, but also in Europe. So um, I would probably have a mixed bag of like financing from like uh, a little bit of from each side of the world. Um, that's more representing who we are. Um, yeah, I, I, I think uh, there's opportunities everywhere. You just need to be able to seize them and, and to uh, to answer a need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good answer. Diplomatic, very diplomatic. <laughs> Not diplomatic, realistic. It's just that it, it is what it is. Um, mm -hmm. I, I we literally have uh, have uh, business opportunities and and funding opportunities everywhere. Mm -hmm. Hundred percent. Okay. So, um, and and then that 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 is true about the funding opportunities. Now, another question that popped into my head just now is that we've 
that I'm sort of on the fence about, but maybe you know it's, it's a controversial topic here. Hopefully, um, is the, there's this thing about NFTs and being able to collateralize your NFT, this, that, and the other. And I mean, is there a space for T DeFi in gaming in blockchain gaming? Is there is is that I mean, is there a space for it? Is there is there a place for it, or is that should they be separate and that the gaming worlds, if they do have monetary value, should just, I mean, they can, but it shouldn't be sort of like the the, the main focus or the core selling point of, 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 of implementing NFTs into your game. That's just my bias. Uh, I, I would love to hear your opinion. In, like, in, in essentially in, the in question is, let me rephrase that. Uh, is is I mean is there is there space like is 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 there a place for DeFi in NFTs and gaming? Uh, is that it's yeah. So that I want to hear your opinion around trying to uh, the, these new initiatives coming up, trying to collateralize your your you know your I don't know what your your crypto punk or um, like a, experience a randomly generative yeah. So you can basically trying to tokenize or collateralize these. Is NFTs um, and is there? Well, a place I mean, like for if, you, if, if you if you consider the NFTs as like a, as an as an asset and and valuable assets, I don't see the reason why you you won't be able to. I mean, there is a difference between allowing it and doing it, and then adopting it. It's just like it would come from from the from 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 the market itself. It's just yeah. Um, it, well, let's see if 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 they will uh, adopt it or not. Um, it's. We can offer it to them. That doesn't mean they're going to do it. But trying to do it also comes with a lot of difficulties and and a lot of uh, compliance issues, legal issues, and and so forth. Is it worth it? Probably. Well, we would do it. Um, I'm not going to be the first to do it. But yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's. Uh, it's. It's a potential. Yeah, absolutely. We were actually talking with Florian just earlier about the potentiality of um, tokenizing NFTs, like in-game token, like uh, NFT tokenization, um, aka we could have a few players, uh, you know, in a medieval game uh, wanting to buy a castle uh, and just like having the option of tokenizing the castle so you can buy just parts of it um, or just tokenizing anything that's NFT related. Um, I think at some point and it's weird because if you think about uh, the essence of an nft it's indivisible um so tokenizing an nft is in itself uh, a weird thing to think about but i believe that it will come but it's also if you want to build um like a, a real economy around your, your nft because it could just be like um, something that's uh, i don't know an achievement that could be an nft that you get when you do something special uh, but it could also be, I don't know, as it had been mentioned earlier, um, a skin in a game, like a lot of skin, as one of the comments was saying, or an object in a, in a game or something like that. And um, with, with this, you could create like an entire economy based on, based on DeFi if you, if you want to. But as Devan said, it's, it comes with a lot of risk and uh, being a first mover can be, well, could be like very interesting or very, very dangerous, depending on uh, which side of the fence you are on. But uh, another thing that could be interesting, uh, especially if you uh, create this economy, would be to provide some kind of uh, maybe decentralized uh, governance because not related to NFT in that case, but if you, I don't know, reward players that uh, are the most active in your game and I don't know, there, are, there are some way that they can earn tokens, uh, they could have maybe power on the, the, the future of the game, basically saying, I would like this evolution in the next release of the game, all these kind of things like that. and. Players could have control on the, on the future of the games, and that could also be a, an interesting option for the for the future of uh, of gaming and uh, what blockchain could, could bring to it. But there are also well risk uh, coming to that, so that's something that you need to, to keep in mind. But also, if you look at like gaming, um, as you said, like if you're you if the game becomes your main source of income, um, and then it becomes your salary, then I mean, like your wages or your revenue, then they might have ways to actually borrow money against your what you're earning on on average in in, in like in a, like a normal like a normal job. So I think that could be possible. It will also be depending depending will depend where you you implement it. But obviously, if you are like really making money within the game and that's that's your income, there should be a way for you to uh, to turn it into a, a DeFi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds yeah, like you need to the solution to. 
like have it be it's a more private market uh delivered solution it's not sort of uh don't try to force the solution onto, yes exactly on, onto Just people. A, yeah. it, 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 like natively if you earn money then then naturally it's it's, it's financially related to your to to you so uh, so applying it into like borrowing money or or doing like a collateral or it's just like hey this is how much i earn on average every month then uh, then yeah it's just like you should be able to to be able to to like borrow micro like micro, micro lending or whatever just or even saving because you're it's a constant ways to uh, it, it's natural um now um if you're just like hey i have this skin and i, I just want to tokenize it, it might not be that natural mm -hmm. you're saying something uh, alexia now i was trying to read a comment uh that just got into my screen <laughs> No worries. You have it? Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. I mean, the, oh, go ahead. Sorry, no, no, you cannot see it. You could technically have a place for any feature on blockchain mm -hmm. to gaming. It's just a matter of relevance to the market. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. Yeah, um, so it's a good, it's a good. Well, and I think that, yeah, again, um, I mean, what will be interesting in the longer term to see are these synergies that can be created um, in between nfts uh in the realm of a broader a blockchain environment um as in you having the ability from uh, your wallet which might be um an ssi you know like a self or an identity related um wallet to allow you to spend uh whatever you've earned in your games into um, a completely unrelated uh, product or service um, and that's, you know, something that can be facilitated by blockchain. And I think that we're going to see like a lot of creativity there. Mm -hmm. it, it, yeah. There's nothing. So like making money from games is it, there's nothing new. You know, people were farming, you know, RuneScape gold, WoW gold, mm -hmm. uh, you know, people were already generating items that they were to sell for monetary value in the real world. So it's like, it's, it's so it's nothing new. It's just sort of now the, now you're sort of closing the loop. You don't have to leave uh, any an electronic medium to, you're sort of all, it, it, the value is intrinsic uh, into the game. You don't have to, you know, go into the fiat markets to sort of validate the, yeah, the, exactly. the goal. Yeah. But also though, it's also staying in, in the same environment, it's just like the farming be, like before and, and everything was out game, just like outside, outside the, the, gaming, the, the game environment itself. Um, if you keep it w within, within the, 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 the gaming environment, um, it, it, you have like a little bit more control and not control in a way that like, I want to know what you're, what I want to control everything you do. It's just like you're making sure that you're doing right. And then you don't create imbalance on anything that's happening, um, in, uh, in, in and after. And another thing like where blockchain could could have a value is on the secondary market. I agree on secondary market of games and games licenses, but that could also be on, as you said earlier, like items, gold and this kind of thing without having to trust on third parties that you don't necessarily know if you can actually trust them. Uh, you could just rely on the infrastructure that the, the game is providing to actually well, manage these uh, secondary marketing directions. Let's say you want to buy some goals from someone while well, you have a dedicated uh, solution based on blockchain to do that instead of having to another solution or talk directly to someone and taking the risk of uh, getting scammed for it. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. on the secondary market, it could uh, provide a lot of uh, a lot of values, and even for for the gaming for the gaming uh, companies, they could maybe benefit from that by just uh, taking um, small fees as the the third party platforms do, and uh, that could just create more revenues by officially allowing players to use these uh, secondary markets. And if, if the if the behavior has been there for for a long long time, um, offering a safer environment for your gamers, it's also a good thing. It's just uh, it creates a little bit more trust, and then and then and then you might actually have more usage of it because you feel safe, um, mm -hmm. scam free in, in in a sense. Even though if you're paying a little bit of money as a, as a transaction fees or or just royalties, doesn't matter. It's just uh, it's just for you to um, to be safe, and that's what people want now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, um, and I think that applies really well with games that might be linked with, um, well, luck as in gambling, um, anything to prove either the randomness or an operation um, or to uh, ensure um, the authenticity of an operation. And this is something in which um, blockchain can fit quite well. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Uh, so another question from the uh, from the audience, uh, Fud Zero uh, asks: Could you discuss a bit on the skepticism regarding the play to earn having an impact on sort of turning children into speculative traders or gamblers, um, and like p possibly minimizing enrollment into like real world jobs in the future because they're sort of they have this sort of yeah this reward mechanism tied to this game, you know, um, sort of like any concerns there. Um, yeah. um, well, I mean, uh, it, it's, uh, do we, are we going to turn kids into slaves? Um, no, I don't think so. <laughs> um, it's also the role of parents um, at some point. It's just like you cannot always put everything onto the gaming site. But yeah, I mean, we will have like to have some control mechanism and, and control maybe like um, time or whatever. It's just like making sure that they're, again, it's, it's, it's about safety. Now the enrollment into a real world job, what does it mean? Yeah, um, I it, it, like uh, you, you can like uh, some of the kids, they want to become like eSport like uh, pro now. Um, so they play, they even play without earning money. So uh, it, it's just like, it depends on, on, on the model that you offer to, to the kids. It's just, uh, it's just uh it's 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 you cannot separate what's happening in the game and what the way that they work that they play and from the rest of the world it's just a, it's just a whole environment this whole uh, ecosystem around that has to be that we can make sure that it's 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 uh it prevented it it's not only us from the industry of course we have our responsibility but don't put it always on our on our shoulders mm -hmm. we and will be there to support sorry it's just like for like uh, the games with in-app purchases. Uh, you need to like provide all the safeguards mm -hmm. possible to, to prevent additive behaviors, just for like uh, gambling and, and these kind of things. It's uh, well, it's a it's a dangerous uh, slippery slope, I would say. But if you write the um, enough safeguard on that, you can uh, still have a, have a control on what's happening. But you need to do it because otherwise, as the comment said, uh, it could lead to like a lot of abuses and uh, some impacts, on, um, especially on kids and uh, teenagers. Very true. Also, and yeah, yeah, I'm glad you said the... Yeah, go ahead. No, no worries. <laughs> well, I would if like I may jump also, off. Oh, sorry, <laughs> if, I would like to add also yeah, the jobs are... Uh, evolving and for instance uh, a job as an influencer or you said uh, an esports pro player probably was unimaginable a couple of years ago and who knows maybe in the future there will be professional play to earners making a living off it so uh, I would think that it's just up to what comes next uh, in the market, in the jobs market, and probably there will be people making a uh, living off playing to earn. Okay. If I may add on the question, I think the roots of the problem or like the roots of this phenomenon we're observing goes much beyond blockchain gaming. Like it goes to free to play and like how there's really a gener generational shift in how our kids who are born using a uh, mobile and the tablet device and are born into buying free to play items, virtual items that they value like real physical items are now thinking. Like they are not wondering themselves, like, is it a physical good? Is it a value? Like they already accept that it has value and they've been spending. And we've seen in the free to play industry before. I remember the Smurf game, like just kids, they were spending thousands of dollars buying those virtual berries and they were valuing them in no sense. So uh, once you accept like that generational gap, like there's a new generation of millions of kids that are now turning into teenagers and in the next five years, they are turning into adults. They already adopted a system where there is more value for them into virtual items than there is into physical goods. And that's not going to change back. Like we are dinosaurs in a way, like they are the next generation that already accept that. So why would you want to go against an ID or a movement where a digital economy of jobs and virtual goods is going to be prevalent in our future and overcome anything that could be physical. In that sense, I, I don't think like there's a feeling of real world jobs anymore. Like it's just part of normal world jobs. We are just getting outdated ourselves from what our kids are will be living. <laughs> well, also that's, I, that's I don't my fault, I don't... but. 
I also don't believe people would be like 100% online and just virtual. Um, and uh, the, the the current situation is the COVID shows it. Like people want to be, <laughs> they want real life interaction. They don't want to be staying behind their their the screen the whole life. And uh, and we'll see now if people are just craving to go to a restaurant. So it it, it will happen. <laughs> well, valuing virtual good doesn't mean you're going to spend all your life in behind a screen. That's the social interaction you can have. You can have them online, physically. But where you generate more money doesn't mean you'd have to generate it into the physical world. And that's, in my opinion, where we are going. No, I totally agree. It's uh, in inspiring. Now, you, that's an inspiring vision of the future, Sebastian, because now I'm thinking, like, man, I, I can't wait to employ people on my, uh, my fiefdom in, in, <laughs> in, uh, in Minecraft or something, start paying people to work my land and... <laughs> this, well, uh, you get kids in Roblox, they are like 10, 12 years old, they phone it against you and they pay all the kids on those forums to build for them, to make those models, except that it's a centralized mm -hmm. economy, it's a whole controlled by one company, but why cannot it extend into the decentralized world and be more fair, transparent and uh, across many dApps, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think yeah. that's a very interesting comment from Victor. I don't know if Jacob, you'd like to pick on this one, but, you know, it's talking about the lifespan of games since, you know, most games have been having a lifespan and whether uh, the ownership given by the NFT features on blockchain game uh, could make um, blockchain games last longer. What's your That's opinion good... on this, guys? That's a good question. Yeah, that is very true because it's almost like this, uh, the smart appliance dilemma where you buy this appliance that is smart, but the company five years later or two years later, they decide they don't want to do smart appliances anymore. And then they stop supporting your appliance. Now you have a dumb toaster or whatever that was supposed to be smart. Uh, and, you know, it's the same with games. Like you, you, you try to do a game and, you know, what if they, you know, how, depending on how they implement blockchain, um, it could you could end up with you know a pretty dumb toaster, uh, so to speak. Yeah, I think that's a really interesting question. Uh, I think it's extremely pertinent. I don't have the answer to it, uh, but I believe that it will force gaming industries to readapt to this new reality. Um, and I think that we will see, um, perhaps if not new models, uh, new ways of um, either playing or or interacting or creating these worlds i'm not sure in my opinion on this there will be some kind of two different uh, types of nft there will be the ones that are actually like positions in game that will definitely lose value when the game is just uh, losing interest but there will be the other one which are the kind of uh, achievements like i was the first one to actually be able to do that and and uh, the fact that it's kind of uh, an artifact or kind of, yeah, something kind of historical, if the game was very popular at the time, I think it, that, that could be things that could actually even, I don't know, uh, keep or even earn value in the future. Just like the, the first tweet that has been sold as an NFT, maybe the first achievement of, uh, I don't know, the first one to be uh, successful on something on a specific game could be something like in WoW, for example, being the first to achieve a raid or something, um, could be sold later in the future because yeah, it was kind of an historical moment for the game and for like the, the population, which is very heavily invested in the game. It could mean a lot even after the game is uh, is not like uh, up to well, date well, anymore. Well, you I think you also have ways to mitigate that. I mean, like if you're if you're thinking, okay, my NFT has this value, and because this game doesn't exist anymore, it doesn't have any value, but if the if the if the company or the gaming studio is building a new games you can always burn the, the the nft and then exchange it to a new one for the new games so yes uh this one will not have like the value but there are mechanisms where you can transfer and then uh, and then and then and then make it fun as well it's just like you can use it like hey if you burn it then you get like a, like you, you can even create like movement between games and you can create incentives um, that's for the mass, the mass NFTs. Now, for the most collect, the, like the more collectibles, as as Florence said, it would create value, and then uh, and then becoming like uh, artifacts or whatever. So it really depends on what kind of NFT we're looking. 
They just have different size, different value, and different type of NFTs. Some of them meant just to be used, and some of them meant to be kept. Um, some will have like more value, and some will be con con like uh, like uh, consumed. So it's it's just uh, it's just a matter of how you how you do it. But yeah, you, we can we can think about it uh, right now. Absolutely, I think what you were saying, Stefan, is an incredible perspective of thinking of game assets in the future as memorabilia and artifacts. Like, for example, the first CryptoPunk that you know we keep seeing sold at Christie's as something that was already as an antique, you know, from from mm -hmm. the space. And at the same time, you know, the concept of burning or transferring once the the portability of NFTs will be possible through games, I think will be incredibly compelling for the gaming industry, so. Yeah, I really believe it's it. There, it's just a, a matter of, uh, of being creative and, and using as a right tool. And, uh, and as, 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 as everything, you have different sort of NFTs and you have different values and different usage. And we will see them like uh, moving forward. There's not only one, it's just like uh, different. Absolutely, yes. I can see Jackie is back and we nearly reached time for our hour and uh, I just wanted to, to warmly thank all of you for joining this conversation and the very many interesting comments that came from the public, but most of all to you, Jacob, for moderating the conversation wonderfully. So thank you all guys for attending. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob. Thank, thank you, Serena. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a great Happiness. day, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next week. So much. Take care, everybody. See you. Thank Bye. you.